Hey guys, and welcome back to the Indie Spotlight here on the Franz Productions YouTube channel. If you're new to this series, this is where I take a look at independent films to help shine a spotlight on all the amazing talent out there making indie movies. Today, we're going to finish off our series on Johnny Wu by talking about his most recent feature film, Wu Lin The Society. Wu Lin The Society is an action sci-fi thriller set in a dystopian future where rampant disease and poor air quality has forced everybody to have to wear masks throughout their daily lives. The movie opens up giving us a glimpse of a cult ritual before a ninja appears inside of a man's dreams and proceeds to kill him. The next day, police arrive on the scene and are baffled by the strange death, at first chalking it up to an overdose suicide. As more bodies turn up though, and a metal patient cries and screams about a devil coming after him, the mystery only goes deeper. Meanwhile, this ninja continues to assassinate seemingly random people who we eventually learn are connected to a horrible tragedy from years before. As to what that tragedy is, however, I'll let you find out for yourselves. You can watch Rule in the Society for yourself. I don't want to spoil any plot details any further from here. So you guys know the drill, go check it out. Instead, let's shift gears and focus on Rule in the Society from a filmmaking perspective. Now the elephant in the room is the inclusion of face masks. Not only was this a stylistic choice, but as the movie was shot during the heights of the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020, the face masks were also necessary for health concerns. Where many productions shut down due to the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020, Johnny Wu found a way to incorporate health guidelines to not only keep the cast and crew safe, but also further his world building. And if you've seen Immortal Kombat The Code, there are also references in Wu Lin The Society to that movie, such as the fictional pharmaceutical company Medican, as well as the bioscanners that feature prominently in Immortal Kombat. Essentially, Johnny Wu just used the face masks as another world building tool to cement his sci-fi cinematic universe. Another cool detail in Wu Lin the Society is the way that Johnny Wu was able to seamlessly incorporate a brand sponsorship into the movie. When you watch the news report, the newscaster makes note of the fact that the Cleveland Police is now privately owned. And when you look at the logo, you will notice that the logo for Moza appears. Now, if you're not into filmmaking and you're just a casual viewer, the Moza logo might not instantly mean anything to you. But if you are an independent filmmaker, you're likely familiar with their film gear. In fact, I even utilize the Moza Air 2 gimbal on a regular basis, and I even have a review of that gimbal up on my channel. So the way that Johnny Wu was able to incorporate the Moza brand sponsorship deal by utilizing it with the Cleveland police in this movie was very ingenious. In fact, you'll even notice when the police are in uniform in this film that their hats have the Moza logo on it too. Now in all of my other indie spotlights on Johnny Wu's work, I like to take some time to appreciate the fight choreography in his movies. All of his movies feature really flashy and stylized fight scenes. And believe me when I say that Wu Lin the Society also has its fair share of flashy and stylized fight scenes. And you can tell that Johnny Wu still puts a lot of love care and attention into the fight choreography in his films. However, unlike Wu's previous films, I would argue that Wu Lin the Society uses the fight scenes a lot more sparingly. Instead, Johnny Wu spends more time focusing on the world building and mystery elements behind the ninja's assassinations. So whenever the fight scenes do happen, the punches really feel like they have more weight behind it because every scene leading up to it really was building that tension slowly to the point of an inevitable blow up. And as usual for a Johnny Wu movie, the cinematography in Wu Lin The Society is stellar. In fact, it's some of my favorite cinematography throughout his entire filmography. Not only that, but I really love the locations that Johnny Wu gets, especially the hospital location. Johnny Wu always does such a really great job of getting some really cool and unique locations. And it's also worth noting that he was also able to get uh, real police cars for the movie. And I'd love to know how he was able to pull that off because that's just too cool. I'd also just really like to take the time to appreciate how far that Johnny Wu has come as a filmmaker, especially when looking back at the rapture from 2007. 
that was shot on video. And then look at where he is today, and you can just really see that all of the production value in his movies with each project grows exponentially after each film that he does. One specific element that I really want to touch on specifically when it comes to Johnny Wu's growth over the years as a filmmaker is the use of CGI and visual effects to help convey superpowers. If you recall, looking back at The Rapture from 2007, he did use visual effects and CGI in a way that almost gave off a campy 1970s comic book aesthetic, whereas now in Wu in the Society, not only has Johnny Wu himself grown, but also the technology has grown so much in that field of visual effects. And what I found were the superpowers like the teleporting ninja, for instance, or, you know, characters being able to shoot energy beams. All of it just appears so seamless now, and it just flows right into the world that he created throughout the rest of the film. So what is the takeaway for indie filmmakers? That's always what I like to focus on in these indie spotlights. It's not just about the movie that I'm talking about in the video, but it's also about how does it relate to you, the audience, the people who want to make movies. Well, here's the deal. You look back at The Rapture from 2007, and then you watch Inner Self, and then you watch Immortal Kombat The Code, and then you watch Wu Lin The Society, and it is just so cool as such a good study of a filmmaker, especially, you know, an indie filmmaker from Northeast Ohio, and watching how he has grown over the years. Every project builds off of the last and improves on a technical standpoint. But at the same time, Johnny Wu hasn't lost his roots. He hasn't forgot his vision, you know? He's still a huge fan of science fiction and martial arts, and it shows in all of his work. And all of these films have really small budgets, okay? Johnny Wu isn't working with some big Hollywood studio with millions of dollars at his disposal. He's working right alongside us, the low budget, indie filmmakers of Northeast Ohio that will pour their blood, sweat, and tears into a movie, even on such a minuscule budget. Why? Because we love making movies. There is a saying that money doesn't buy everything, and that is especially true in filmmaking. Sure, there's a lot of aspects of filmmaking that cost money, like gear, or, you know, let's say you wanted to do some crazy, like, explosion effect, you know, and do it practically. But here's the thing, in reality, creativity, drive, determination, and a vision does not cost anything but your time, your commitment, your love, and your passion. And if you have all of that, then you can make your movie. Don't let anything stop you from making your movie. Don't use an excuse that I don't have enough money or, you know, I don't know the right people. There's a lot of groups on Facebook. All you need to do is make a post, say that, hey, I want to network with some filmmakers. And there's lots of people out there that would be more than happy to help you, you know. And if you're from Northeast Ohio and you're from the Akron, Canton, Cleveland area, the Cleveland Indie Club, which is actually ran and hosted by Johnny Wu, is an excellent group to be a part of, not only online, but also for the in-person meetings, okay? There is nothing stopping you from making your first movie other than you. Anyway, guys, that is all I have time for here today. Remember, if you like this content and you want to see even more videos on indie filmmaking, go ahead and drop a like, subscribe, and turn that bell on for notifications so you never miss a new video on the Franz Productions channel. And if you yourself are a filmmaker and you want me to talk about your movie on the Indie Spotlight, all you need to do is go down into the comments, tell me what the name of your movie is as well as where I'll be able to watch it, and I will talk about your film in a future video. Anyway guys, until next time, that's a wrap.